Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today I'm going to show you a rapid prototyping project that I'm helping a friend with. Um, he needs a way to set up a counting device to um, run a, some, some tests on something he's working on and so what he wanted was something which would uh, allow um, an incremental counter which I'm accomplishing here with the opto interrupt um, or basically an optical sensor and then display the time that is elapsed in the cumulative count uh, but every time the um, item was counted he needed it to index um, a, a movement which I'm accomplishing with the servo here so I'm going to go ahead and just plug in the Arduino which is uh, the USB cable here is just actually for the power it starts up and then the screen stays blank until the first um, item is counted and um, I'm just accomplishing this now by using a piece of sheet metal but basically once you interrupt the sensor it displays zero minutes and eight seconds and there's a count of one now if you watch the next time I interrupt it's going to jump 18 seconds count of two you know if we wait a few seconds you'll see 26 seconds, only 29 seconds, oops. So the idea is that it's keeping track of the runtime inside the Arduino, but it's only displaying the time that was elapsed until the last count, um, which is critical. After we approach a minute here, you'll see that the um, seconds restarts and the minutes count uh, jumps to one. There you can see one minute and zero seconds, a count of nine. And so what's happening in the code, which I'll walk through here in a second, is um, every time the optical sensor is interrupted, the servo um, writes the servo to from 90, which is its current position, to 180, which is what tips it forward, and then it goes back to 90, um, and then it loops through. So you can't actually, you can't have a count occur while the servo is running, but that's okay because there's enough natural delay in, in what he's trying to do um, for that to occur. Um, I'm using the uh, LCD here that they talk about on the Lady Ada forums and, and website, which is Adafruit, which I'll also link to on the blog. But um, they sell it, and it's a great way to get into LCDs because it's really so easy. You do, um, you do take up, I think, six pins on the Arduino, but as you can see, I've got the... Um, LCD hooked up. I've got one pin for my optical sensor, and I've got one pin for the servo, and I've still got um, you know a couple pins left. So, pretty cool what you can do with a relatively inexpensive product. The um, the LCD I believe is like thirteen dollars, and that includes the potentiometer which you use to adjust the brightness of the screen. Um, the Optical sensor, this little kit here actually is from SparkFun. It's nice because um, it includes the uh, little board here to connect the resistors that are you need to have that set, uh, set up correctly and um, standard you know, hobby servo. Um, so that's it. I will go ahead and uh, walk you through the code now. The next step is going to be to put this all into a, a nice milled or sheet metal, I haven't thought about it yet, package which will allow him to have a sort of standalone product which he can use with the um, with the 9 volt uh, wall wart and uh, package this thing up. I'll be sure to post a follow up with uh, what I come up with. Alright, first I wanted to show you some of the parts I'm using. Uh, this is the Adafruit website and this is looks like product ID number 181 which is the uh, $12 LCD screen at 16 characters wide and uh, two rows high. Um, the nice thing about these is um, although many of the LCDs have the same chipset of uh, HD4470, which is what you want to stick to with the Arduino library, the nice thing about this one is that it, um, let me see if I can find the big screen here, is that all the pins are lined up across the top row. Um, I purchased another one from Jameco and it had an odd array of pins along the left side which was harder to understand what correlated to what and it also wasn't breadboard compatible so 
um, I would definitely recommend either getting it straight from Adafruit or f making sure you find one that has the 16 pins across the top that are breadboard friendly. Um, they're also including the potentiometer, which is another nice feature for the $12. Um, the optical, or excuse me, photo interrupter um, is a SparkFun product you can see here. Uh, it's a couple bucks for one of them. And the breakout board is right here. It looks like it's actually a new version compared to the one I'm using. Um, and it does not include the resistor you need, which they're mentioning here is uh, 220 ohm, but a 330 ohm works as well. So those are the um, non-Arduino um, hardware products I'm using. Let's walk through the code real quick. I'm calling the servo library. Uh, obviously, and then I'm calling the liquid crystal library. Uh, make sure you're using version 17 of the Arduino um, software, it's just easier that way. Um, you'll see in the tutorial, actually let me go back to that, on the Ladyata site here, which is um, available via the links, well it's actually just right here, of how to, how to connect the pins. Um, she's using a slightly different um, pin connection than I am, and that's only because she uses pin, as you can see, she uses um, pins 9 and 10 in hers, and I wanted to leave pin 9 free for the servo, so I'm using um, these sets of pins. You'll see when you look at how to connect them, it's pretty, it's quite easy. Um, most of this is co well commented and intuitive. My opto interrupter is on pin 7, my servo um, is on pin 9. Um, you start in the setup by um, saying lcd.begin 16.2 that's that tells you to um, that the size of the screen which is important if you're wrapping text or something and then uh, basically it's just a loop where I'm reading the pin state and if the pin status has changed then it recognizes that it counts another pin count you clear the LCD screen each time this is important because otherwise when you go from say 59 seconds down to another minute and zero seconds, um, your text needs to update because it's now sh slightly shorter since you've gone from two digits of seconds to one digit of seconds. So the clear is an easy way to accomplish that. Um, I'm setting the cursor to um, the uh, first row in the uh, excuse, yeah the first row in the first uh, cell and displaying the count, or excuse me, this is the second um, line. Line one is the second line, line zero is the first line. And then, um, yeah, I'm doing this actually slightly out of order, I apologize. And then the first line, which is here, I'm setting the time. The only thing I had learned, which I didn't know before, is the way of doing the seconds. Normally, if you just did seconds equals millis, which is thousandths of a second, divided by thousand, you would continue to accumulate the seconds past 60 um, and obviously you only want 60 seconds and then you want it to be a minute so by doing um, this percent 60 it basically takes the um, the, the, the div uh, division remainder which is a cool little feature um, and then I'm just printing the time to the screen and every time this loop happens, I'm doing my servo, which delays, writes, and delays, and you could trim those delay times down if you needed to, and then you restate the button state equals val, which is what allows you to then check to see if it's been interrupted again. So here's the code. I'll post, uh, post this on the website so that you can download and play with it, and let me know if you have questions. Thanks, folks.